Well, I discovered something hilarious about this deal. So, everything is working now. I had to change out some of my connectors because the doorman grease had gotten into a couple of areas and not completely cut the wires. So, my low beam is apparently my high beam, and my high beam is my low beam. Whatever. That's a distinction I can make for later. Don't care that much. I'll fix that wiring when I get around to it. Also, while I was at it, I fixed the uh, negative for my turn signal. So now I have a bunch of solder in here. And I'm going to put a little, uh, little fix clip on this area. And we should be good to go. And eventually I'll go ahead and just reverse the uh, white and blue wires. That's, that's hilarious. Well, whatever. It works. And that's what's important. So I'm going to save you guys the boring details of me drilling and mounting and all of this other stuff. That can be, uh, that can be some riveting, uh, YouTube for another time or actually I've already recorded most of that. So basically we're going to drill four holes, mount the tail light. And then if the uh, mood strikes me and I feel like bleeding brakes and wiring the rest of the switches, I'm not really that interested in it because I've really got to race prep this thing. So just having a working head and tail light for now is fine with me. <coughs> the big uh, challenges are going to be to securely mount the battery in there, which I have some double three, a double sided 3M tape I'm going to give a shot to. Getting this on and making sure the headlight's secure. And then today's other big deal is going to be changing the uh, break-in oil out and loosening the forks a bit and straightening that out and then we should be race ready. The air filter only has 21 miles on it so that's still in prime shape. Though after this race, yeah, that thing is definitely getting changed out. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and uh, do a little bit of fixing up. Also, I've kind of changed my camera settings to see if I could get a little more realistic color. I uh, got some good advice in uh, PMs on uh, Facebook. So maybe we can see if this has improved the quality of the video a bit. It's more so for writing, but we'll see what goes on. Much past that, uh, here next weekend, we'll be up in beautiful Decatur, Texas at Rocky Ridge Ranch. And recording some, uh, recording quite a bit of content, hopefully. Well, in the meantime, we're gonna take a break, and the next time we pop in, this should be pretty much good to go. You know, earlier I was saying it wasn't important to fix the high and the low beam areas, but actually these are fairly easy to take apart. So you see this little clip right here. You basically reach into this area with a small flat blade screwdriver and bend it back and you can pull these out. Once you have them out, you bend the tab back out to where you have a bit of snap and catch to it. And then you basically feed it back into the light connector. So if you're using like an older Baja Designs light kit, they actually make you do this to the kit. So now we've got everything supposedly wired the way it's supposed to be. So let's see. We've got low beam, high beam. Okay, everything's wired the way it's supposed to be. So there's a quick little lesson on re uh, reconstructing your lighting harness. So this came from China, wired wrong. It was wired wrong in China. So we just had to use a little bit of uh, USA know-how to get it fixed up. All right. So you catch yourself putting on your dual support kit and you ask yourself, well, how do I put this thing on, hold it and drill it when I only have two arms? Well, what I've used is a little bit of stuff from my trade. Some Tyvek flashing tape. That stuff will hold in place very, very nicely. I'm going to straighten out with one more strip along the bottom to keep it lined up. Then I'm going to drill four holes and mount with uh, screws and nylock, wash uh, nylock nuts and some washers. So we'll see the finished product here in a little bit.